everybody and welcome back to Spider on the Rise. I'm your girl Spider and together we are on our way up and I do mean all the way up. Um, today's video is going to be something completely different than what y'all are used to. Today I will not be talking about myself. Today I'm going to be telling you guys a story time straight out of the book of Revelations. Um, this is going to be a four part video so I'm going to drop this one this week and every week I will drop um, a new part so part one through four unless it gets real heavy then I'll make a part five so we can chit chat a little bit about that so yes I will be putting my two cents in here but we're coming straight out of the book of Revelation so um, let's get right into it. actually no the one question that I got I'm in Revelations one through five so for everybody who knows this book anybody who um, has read it Go get your coffee, go get your tea, grab a snack, come on back, because we're about to delve into this real quick. So, uh, the book of Revelations, the story is by John, okay? And they say that John wrote this, the Revelations, between uh, 90 and 96 AD, okay? So that's a while, that, that's that number right there. <laughs> To me, I can't even fathom. Okay, hello, I was born in 82, 1982, not 82, but 1982. So that number I can't even compute. Like, what were they doing at that time? He's getting ready to tell you. Okay, um, I would summarize this stuff, but I just want to go bit by bit. Now, this story begins Revelations 1 through 9. This is John's vision of Christ. So right right here is telling you what John saw. So we are all, you know, right now, everybody is caught up in the media. God is black. God is white. God is... Da, 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 da. If you look at the book of Revelations, he never said black, white. I don't even... It wasn't even a thing back then, right? So whatever. God is a being. It's a living being, a spiritual person and we're getting ready to see a whole what he looked like for real so let's get into it now john is on the island of patamus now y'all i'm getting ready to kill butcher these names so y'all bear with me that's why you need your bible look at the bible read it for yourselves because i ain't gonna be able to pronounce half of this stuff but i'm gonna tell you anyway so john is on the island of patamus now this is a roman prison to my understanding they put people on this island when you do something. Now, John, John's crime was preaching the gospel. He was talking about Jesus all the time, and the Romans was like, we need to get him out of here. So they put him on Patmos, okay? Island of Patmos. That's what happened, okay? Um, now, now, imagine you in your backyard, okay? And you going to water some flowers, you walking around your backyard, you're not thinking twice about pitter-patters on your leaves. You don't care about birds chirping. These are all natural sounds. But if you hear a big dog growling behind you and you know you ain't got no dog, you're going to be scared, right? So in the book of Revelations, it says John was chilling, okay? And he hears trumpets. There's not supposed to be trumpets back there. It's not, this is before he even turned around, okay? That is what was happening. And he said, he was hearing this, he heard the sounds of trumpet. He was hearing this, he heard the sounds of trumpet. And, and it, the sound was telling him to write everything down that you see and hear and take it to the seven churches. Before this man turns around, he hears a sound. And the sound has a message in it. Write everything down that you're about to see in here and take it to these seven churches okay for those of you that say god is nowhere i want to tell you this if god can get to those uh 10 lepers when they were exiled if god can get to an island he can get to you okay know that take know that i believe it taught me a lot i'll show you where i say it in the bible um, okay, so write everything down that you hear and see and take it to the seven churches. The seven churches, were, now right now, he's only hearing. He has not turned around yet. He's only hearing. In Revelations 1 through 9, uh, 1, 
9 through 20, here's the visual. When he turns around, he sees seven golden lampstands. Seven golden lampstands and a son of man. So this looks like a person, okay? It's, it's not like a, a big old eyeball with a bunch of eyeballs. This looks like a, a person, the figure of a person so far. But I'm going to keep going. Uh, looks like the son of man. He's wearing a long robe down to his feet with a golden sash across his chest. His hair was white like wool. Not he had a fro like wool. White like wool, white like snow. They're just describing the color, not the texture. Okay? People read. Don't believe me? Read the Bible. We in Revelations 1 and 9 through 20 with the description of Jesus. Okay? Um, eyes were blazing like blazing fire. Blazing fire. So like that amber color, some red, orange. Okay? His feet were bronze, like glowing in the furnace. So, again, a radiant, something radiant of color. Not black, not white, not brown, none of that. Just think about the things that I'm saying to you, the description that is actually in the Bible. Not what you think they're saying, but what they're saying. Okay? His voice sounded like Russian water. So imagine that. Go play some, uh, go play a stream or a waterfall or something like that and, and see what that, that sounds like. You know, when pe some people hear water, um, they have a sense of peace. Some people have a sense of panic. It just, it all depends on the person. But this is what the description is saying, okay? John, by the way, at the time is a, face, a faithful apostle, okay? So this is not... He's not like a super sinner. He ain't out here chopping people up or nothing like that. He is preaching the gospel. That's what landed him in jail in the first place because he's talking about Jesus. So he's a faithful uh, person of God. So can you imagine what you would do as a sinner? Okay. I'm not saying he never sinned because I don't know. I'm just saying what the Bible says. Let's go on with this description. He said this person had double-edged swords coming out of his mouth. Seven stars in his right hand. And his face was like a shining sun. Okay, that had to be bright. You can't see the sun when you look at it. You, you squinting, you still can't see, right? And your eyes hurt. So I don't think he saw a face. Come on, y'all. I don't know about you guys, but I would have been terrified. Now, two things could happen for me personally. I would either run or I would probably pass out because at this point, I'm looking at some person with swords coming out of their mouths and I can't see their face even though they're right in front of me. Okay? The Bible says... Well, let's be honest, because half of y'all are running from bugs. So imagine this standing in front of you. And don't tell me you'll be like, oh, Jesus, let me tell you about my life. You're not doing that. Be honest. Come on. We're talking about the Bible. Let's be honest. Anyway, the Bible says when John saw it, he fell to his feet like he was dead. So in other words, John passed out. Now, this is a faithful servant of God, and he is terrified. So imagine you being a sinner. What would happen? This man passed out. He said like he was dead. So that means you you passed out. You was out of it. You was asleep. You, you fainted, pretty much. Then God put his right hand on, on him and said, do not be afraid. Now, we heard this term before. Every time an angel appears, they say, do not be afraid. So that tells me that they don't look like Tinkerbell. Angels don't. They describe angels in the Bible, too. And I, I can do a series on that but it says God said do not be afraid I'm gonna keep reading because I know myself I would be um, I would be afraid okay uh, <laughs> so do not be afraid he goes on to identify himself and he says uh, as the first the last the last the living who died and returned forever and ever 
and holds the key of death in Hades. That's who he said he is. That's who he's talking to John. Um, so then he, he gives the message to the seven churches. So to Ephesus, Ephesus, I'm saying it wrong. Anyway, he tells them, this is about the seven lamps, lampstands. He says, tell them to go back to being the way they were before um, and that they also needed to repent. Remember this word, repent. If they don't, he'll remove their lampshades. If they do, he'll let them eat from the tree of life. This is because their shared hate, uh, hatred for the practices of the Nickelodeons. Now, mind you, this is uh, Nicolaitans. That's what he's saying. I just said Nickelodeons because when I first saw it, I was like, oh, man. But, yeah. So, the the church, that first church, apparently there was a group of people called the Nicolaitans that were doing some practices that um, God just hated. And it says a shared hate because the uh, ethnicists, whatever these people are called, they didn't like it either. So, God gave them a pass because of their shared hate for these this practice. Not the people, but the practice, okay? And for Smyrna, the first and last. We're talking about the first and last with them. And he says, tell them to be faithful even to the point of death. He tells them that the devil plans to put them in prison and test them. Um, if they stay faithful, they won't be harmed in the second death. So this group of people... Um, this group of people, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And so God is telling them it's about to get worse for you. Uh, keep in mind before he tells them, before he tells them what to do, he's telling all of these churches, all seven churches, he is aware of the sins they committed. He knows everything that's going on. So he's coming to just give them instruction on what's about to happen um, when the scroll, these scrolls open. Okay, so that and that's gonna happen at the end. So we'll talk about that in another video. Right now, I'm just giving you the lay of the land. Okay, um, so that's what he said about that about those people. Okay, now mind you, he didn't say uh, repent there. Okay, the next thing we're gonna say, we're he's gonna talk about is the swords from his mouth, and we're talking about the para paramums. This is the church of Paramum. Um, this place is where he says Satan has his throne, but the people still uh, remain true to the Lord's name. He told them he knew that they had bad stuff going on there, um, but it was just a few of them. So not the whole church, just a few people that was carrying on the way they shouldn't have. So he told them to repent. Okay, that's the second church he told to repent now. Um or he would fight against them and they would have to give them uh he hold on he said repent or he was going to come back and fight against them when they come back in the second coming he was fighting against them um but if they did what he they were supposed to do that he would give them hidden manna in a new name written on a stone only known to the person he gives it to so whenever he called your name you knew that it was him when he came back because that's the only person that would know that name, okay? So that's that. Then Blazing Eyes, Thyteria, Thyateria, this church. He said uh, they're doing better than they were at first, but their problem was Jezebel. He was upset because they were tolerating her. So he, he said, he, I gave her plenty of time to repent and all these things, and she didn't do it. So she's going to suffer and her children are going to suffer. Um, so to the people, he wanted them to repent. Uh, he reminded them that he searches hearts and minds. And then he told them he wouldn't do anything else to them in short. So this, he's saying, hey, y'all go ahead and repent. If you did anything that she told you guys to do, um, you know, I forgive you. I, I, I know what your heart, where your heart is. I know what your mind is doing. She's a lost cause. Let her go because um, it's over for her and her kids if they don't, um, you know, repent. But she did it. So y'all know the story. What happened to her? If you don't, maybe we'll cover it in a different video. All right. So here we go. Seven stars. And this is Sardis, the church of Sardis. He told them to repent because he will be back 
but he didn't tell them when. He said, some of them are all ready to go. He said, some of y'all are ready to go with me right now, so stay that way. Um, but most aren't, so they needed, they needed a, to repent ASAP, okay? Key of David, Philadelphia, the Church of Philadelphia, he also tells them to be patient because he's coming. He doesn't tell them to repent of anything. Um, he talks about the true Jews and what he has for them. What he says, what, what I have for you, no one can take. What I take from you, no one can give you. The doors I open, no one can close. And the doors I close, nobody can open, okay? The word of a man, Laocida, Laocidia, yeah, something like that. Anyway, he talks about being lukewarm. These are the Christians that are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. Now, we all know what that means, right? That's not a good thing. Um, so he tells them to repent if they want to see that, his throne, at a seat at the throne. That's pretty much what he said. So John was given clear instruction as to what information to give each of these churches all before the end of time. Right sounds like, hey, one through seven, I need you to do these things because I'm coming. He didn't give them a time. He didn't say none of that. He just said, this is what I noticed from these seven churches. This is what I want them to do, um, have already done by the time I get back or it's going to be bad. Sound like a clear warning to me. Sound like in today's times, right? We've been told but there's still some Christians or some people who um, don't, they don't believe, right? Anyway, here we go. Now let's get into the story time. Now John was on the uh, island of Patmos. Just to recap, he's minding his business. He hears something behind him that sounds like trumpets. And that trumpet tells him, hey, when you turn around, I want you to write down everything that you hear and see from the, t from the point of you turning around. In fact, write down the sound that you're hearing now, okay? John turns around and he sees God. He goes on to describe God and he is telling us what God is saying to him. This is what God says, okay? That's what he said. That's what he wrote down. Now. At this time, we're going to talk about heaven because he was allowed to see that as well. Um, here's a sneak peek in here, okay? Revelations 4, 1 through 11. John said, after the message to the seven churches, he looked and there was an open door to heaven. That trumpet voice he heard before said, come here, come up here so I can show you what's going on up here. And I need to tell you, you need to see what, what has to happen after this. Somebody up there is telling me to come up here to heaven as an alive person. Now me, I'm a person that has a clear understanding of what's going on in this book. Of, I don't, I've not, um, I can't tell you the Bible from front to back, right? I don't know. What I can tell you is I know that it's about to go down because we in Revelations. Okay, so I trust God, but I also fear God, and that's a healthy fear. So you don't know what, John doesn't know what's going on, um, but John is a faithful servant. So he's like, okay, cool, I'm coming up here. I trust you, right? Here I come. So he says, you know, I'll show you what has to happen after this. Now clock this T. That trumpet voice sounds like God. The Son of Man Sounds like Jesus. Uh, in the end of every message, and I'm going to read this to you verbatim, it says, "Whatever, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the church. That's the Holy Spirit. So y'all, y'all, just in that short amount of time, John witnessed the Holy Trinity, because people tend to always talk about how can God be God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. It got to be three different people, whatever. 
you just saw pretty much all three of them work together just now. God is that trumpet, okay? When John turned around, he saw Jesus, okay? Son of man, that's what he said he looked like, okay? And then every message was delivered by the Holy Spirit. There's your Holy Trinity right there, okay? So y'all, I hope y'all clock that T. But I'm going to continue. Okay. Um, anyway, back to my story. After John got invited to go to heaven and see what was going on, he was in the spirit at once. I don't know what that means. Um, I'm going to assume that he left his body on the earth and he went up in spirit. That's what that sounds like to me. I could be wrong. Go read the Bible, interpret the way you need to interpret. I'm just telling the story the way I read it, okay? And how I interpreted it, all right? But back to this. Um, right then he saw a, th a throne with somebody sitting on it. He said they look like Jasper and Ruby. Like, these are like beautiful, um, colorful gems, okay? Just, that's, my mind goes to gems, rubies. Jade, Jasper, you know, okay? That's what that looked like. A rainbow shone like emerald, circling the throne. Now around that throne was like 24 other thrones with elders sitting on it. So like, in my mind, I feel like them elders was like Enoch and uh, Moses in them, okay? I could, <laughs> this is my mind, okay? This is just my mind, don't cover me. Anyway, um, they're all dressed in white with gold crowns so john john was super dope i'm 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 in awe and i'm trying to explain like how what this what this is for me right but this is i didn't even see it trying to explain it in and, and john seen it and this is how he's explaining it so it had to be something like so beautiful it just had to um he not only seen it, but he actually wrote it down. So thank, thank God for John, because now we can like kind of get an idea of what's up there, right? Anyway, let's get back to it. Okay, so there was all kind of flashes and lightning and rumblings and just all kind of stuff. The whole nine yards coming from the main throne. There were seven blazing lamps. We already seen this before. That was the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, okay? That's what he said. Um, a sea of glass as clear as crystal. That was probably so pretty. You know, people always got crystal in their house, their china cabinet and stuff. Like, just imagine just having that somewhere that without kids, because if you got kids, it's going to be bad. But I bet you it was beautiful, y'all. Anyway, um, so that was, that was that. So in the middle of the throne were the four living creatures, uh, were the four living creatures uh, covered with eyes front and back so that has to be one of them ophanims I could be wrong the, the angels this was some type of angel the first was like a lion the second was like a ox the third face was the face of a man and the last one was like an eagle this is all which has six wings with eyes all over them and under them they never stopped singing wait a minute one being holy holy lord god almighty who was and is and is to come um why do I, I why do they need so many eyes like what they looking at who they looking at what we gonna i don't think it tells us that but i that's my question that if y'all know what they looking at please tell me because i want to just know why they got so many eyes um i digress Every time those creatures sang that song, those elders will fall at the foot of the man that was sitting on the main throne and take off their crowns and place it at his feet. And they were singing, you are worthy, O Lord. So this is, okay, so this is a whole concert. Everybody's singing right now. You are worthy, O Lord, I receive, or, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being okay that's the t on the throne situation though 
Um, so let's get into these scrolls. So at this time, I feel like it, everybody's always singing this. Some, somebody's always singing. So it's a concert up there, okay? And they just glorifying this person or this being that's in the middle, at the main throne. That's, that's what it's all about, the main throne, okay? So John, he continues, and he said, the person on the main throne had a scroll in his right hand, um, and it had writing on both sides with seven seals, okay? This is how you know it's about to go down. The seven seals. Um, so he, he also, so this, this angel proclaimed, is proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? Now y'all know it's about to go down um, as soon as that scroll opens. That's what they tell us at the end with revelations and what's getting ready to happen to us in this day. Um, once that scroll gets open. So, I mean, that's what's happening. Let's continue. John said, no one in heaven on earth, no one in heaven on earth or under the earth could open, could even, could open or even look inside. At this point, John is crying because nobody could open it. He didn't get to see. He like, well, what, what's the tea? That's when the elders told him to stop crying because the lion of the tribe of Judah, root of David, is going to open it. Because I know what's supposed to happen when it get open. I'm not, I'm not in a hurry for him to open it. That's just me because I'm scary like that. <laughs> okay uh, I'm like just leave it closed it's, just come get the people you need to come get and, and let everybody else do whatever but okay it ain't about me just then he saw a lamb looking like it had been slain standing at the center of the throne surrounded uh, by four living creatures and the elders the lamb has seven horns seven eyes which were seven spirits of God sent out onto the earth. The lamb took the scroll from the right hand of the person that was sitting on that main throne. That's when those creatures and the elders fell to the lamb's feet with harps and golden bowls full of incense, which were prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God's persons from every tribe and language and people, nation. You have made them to be kingdom, to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on earth. Um... Me personally, I like R&B, K-pop, stuff like that. Um, Christian music be fire too. Shout out Hillsong. But it sounds like they sing a lot up there. They sing a lot of praises. I wonder how much praise, and, uh, praise songs we sing on a regular. I know that I don't, just being honest. I don't, like, unless it's a song that's really catchy. I can't imagine the, the sound of these songs. Because we're so used to things rhyming and with rift and all of that. I bet you this song, is, I just think harps sound beautiful. So I could just imagine how this sounds. Probably sound like beautiful water and crystals in my mind. That's where I'm going. But I, I mean, I digress again. Um, anyway, uh, that's when it got live, y'all. Because thousands of thousands of ten thousands of angels came out of nowhere singing now i told y'all it was a whole concert up there okay but this, it got live at this point when jesus because that's who they saying he was slain right he died for our sins he paid with the with his blood right so th this lamb they said it looked it looked like the lamb had just been slain so he this is when he ascended so john got to see what happened after God had ascended. He was there because it says that, right? Um, so it got live. Everybody was singing. The entire universe started singing up there, okay? Straight concert, all of that. Amen? This is what this is what it looked like 